Welcome to the show you know and love. Of course, it's DSI coming straight at you. Of course, guys, we gave you our Bayside show last, last week. week. This week is Delaware's turn. We're running through the Henlopen Conference on today. That's right, Trey. Now we've got 14 teams to preview, so we're really going to get straight into it. Yeah. Standing by with our first set of previews is Jonah Restuccio. Thanks, Jeff. Now, it's just the same way it worked last week during the Bayside Coaches Conference. We're going to preview a couple teams here and there, and then you get to hear from the coaches of those teams joining us here tonight. Four of them, Jeff, as you said, 14 Henlopen previews to get to in the next 30 minutes, and we'll start things off with the South. Seven teams in that neck of the woods, and our first team to preview tonight is the Milford Buccaneers. Under head coach Sean Strickland, Milford has never had a losing season, and last year lost to Del Mar in the state title game. Losing a handful of seniors, including the school's all-time scoring leader, David Bowman, this year's maroon and gold will look a little different, but will be ready come September. And we just mentioned them, the Delaware D2 state champion, Delmar Wildcats. The Wildcats return many key pieces from last year's team, and they're confident that they can run the table in the South. Trey and Jeff are joined by Coach Hearn back on the desk. Now, that was Jonah's words. That wasn't Coach Hearn's words. I first want to say, our first guest, the leader of the seven-time DIAA champions and defending D2 champions, Dave Hearn and the Delmar Wildcats. Thank you so much, Coach Hearn, for joining us tonight. The first thing, uh, last time you were here, a couple years, or last year, uh, you were in a title drought. Uh, now it's a little bit different. How does it feel to be the hunted this time instead of the hunter? You would definitely rather be in that position. That, uh, it's a bullseye, but it's also the one means you're doing something right and you a little extra motivation there to try to stay there. It is. And coach, you know, I was actually out at training camp not too long ago, about a week ago. Asked you how the team's looking only a few days into training camp. So how would you kind of answer that question now? You've seen the team, you see what they've looked like, you know, maybe through about a week. What are your expectations? Well, their, their expectations are high. Those kids, we got a lot of guys who were young last year, sophomores starting in a state title game. So that's a good experience. They know how to get there. So as far as the drive, to get back there, that's they, high for them. Uh, we had freshmen on the field, uh, sophomores, juniors. We lost some good people, but we got a lot of guys returning who do know the way to get there. Coach, obviously, you did. You said it. And with high school, it's going to happen. Of course, with graduation, you are going to lose people. Of course, you lost a couple key pieces. One in that backfield that was really, really tough was Brooks Parker. Uh, how if is this team going to be as successful as last year's team? Have you put your kind of put your nail on how you're going to do that yet? Nope. <laughs> we're, we're, we, we have good people filling for him and others because we lost some other folks too, 13, 14 seniors. Yep. But we have leadership. We have good, good people coming along behind those who left us. We had good leadership last year. And that, that's a lot that you really don't see on the field. That's in the locker room. Yeah, that's on yeah, the practice field. Exactly. So th they work hard in practice every day. And one of the cool things I remember speaking, you talk about the depth of this team. I spoke with Tayshawn when I was, you know, at your training camp. And I said, you know, how's it going to be? What's it going to be like filling that void that Brooks left? And he said, it's not just me. He said, we have a fantastic backfield along with a lot of great underclassmen and other seniors and juniors that are coming in. So Tayshawn even spoke to the depth you have in terms of your backfield. How do you feel as though the depth of your team looks this year now heading into maybe a state you know, title run possibly. It looks great when we you start a practice, but you take one out of there, <laughs> just one. All of a sudden you say, well, we'll move him there. Now you're saying we have no depth. So it, it, as with any team, you, you got to stay that way. We were lucky last year. We lost people, but others stepped into those roles. We had quarterback issues with injuries and we stepped forward last year, but that's a year ago. That doesn't mean anything now. So, uh, the heart of that team, a lot of it's still there. And hopefully if we do run into those issues, if a Tayshawn goes down, who steps into his place? So that's what they're working right now so that when it, if it happens, they're ready to do it. Coach, and, and the last thing I want to ask you about is last year coming into the pit playoffs, um, you know, we kind of felt like you guys got slighted getting an eight seed, and that kind of put a chip on your team's back a little bit. How do you feel like you go into this year knowing that a lot of people in the state consider you guys number one or atop that list as far as teams to, with, with returning talent? And how do you kind of groom that and not kind of get, I, I want to say not get cocky, uh, but keep your guys humble? Because there's a difference coming in at eight into the tournament and coming in at one in the tournament in the way you play. I think they remember going into the tournament last year as a little bit of an underdog. But once you're in there, if you can just be lucky enough to reach that, everybody's the same. It's, a, it's an 0-0 record. We were real happy to just to make that. And uh, the teams we were able to sneak by, uh, Woodbridge and Milford and those guys, they were top-notch. So we felt like we'd already been through playoff games before we ever got there. 
So right now we've got uh, a good Cape and Lopen team and a St. Yeah. Mary's team that we've never beaten. So we've got to worry about them first. Then the playoffs are a long way away. Yeah, first time playing against Cape in 10 years. So yeah. that'll be on September 7th when the Wildcats open up their schedule. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. It's time to take our first commercial break. But when we return, we're talking about the other chance in Delaware. They also happen to come from the Hen Lopen Conference. The Smyrna Eagles are previewed when DSI returns. This is David Hearn. I'm the head coach at Delmar High School, and you're watching Delmarva Sports Insider.